So to introduce Svetlana, Svetlana obtained a PhD from uh, Moscow State University. And shortly after that, she moved to the United States. And she's been uh, affiliated with the University of Florida for uh, roughly two decades, where her and her research team have done uh, or contributed to seminal research on Cyprus Christie's of virus. I had the privilege of um, visiting Svetlana's lab in the beginning of my PhD study, and I gained a lot of in, um, insight into this unique virus. So Citrus Tristeza virus, or CTV, causes one of the most um, severe viral uh, diseases of Citrus, and Svetlana is probably the foremost researcher of this pathogen. And her contributions to um, the field of um, CTV biology have been uh, recently recognized through the award of a uh, Syngenta Crop Protection Award uh, by APS. So, Tristeza is a really unique virus, and any researcher wanting to make this their focus of research is really up for a challenge. It has one of the largest genomes of any plant virus. And uh, many of its genes have no known homologs. So, as the title of Svetlana's talk suggests, much of Tristeza's um, biology has been uh, shrouded in mystery for the longest time. Um, but her and her group have been instrumental in shedding um, a lot of light on many of the intricacies of this virus. So, with that, I'm going to hand over to Svetlana to share with us her research. Thank you very much, David, uh, for the introduction. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this seminar series for the opportunity uh, for me to present uh, my research here. The title of my talk is Understanding Cross-Protection by Citrus Tristeza Virus our quest for the answer to a century old question. So in my talk, I will introduce you to Citrus Tristeza virus. Uh, this is the virus that we have been working on for several years. And this is actually the largest uh, RNA virus of plants. I will uh, talk to you about very interesting phenomena of cross protection or super infection exclusion the phenomenon that has been discovered nearly 100 years ago. However, we still do not know much about the mechanism of this phenomenon. And then I will talk to you about our research on dissection and characterization of the viral factors that mediate uh, CTV superinfection exclusion. And at the end, I would like to also discuss how our research findings uh, help to aid uh, management citrus diseases uh, on, on the field. All right, so first of all, uh, why do we care about plant viruses? Uh, plant viruses cause major losses in crop plants and uh, food production. And such losses are estimated at more than $30 billion annually worldwide. And uh, some viruses that infect cassava, potato, rice, or coca, as you can see here on this slide uh, with some of the examples, has uh, resulted in significant losses in crop and revenue in many different countries over the world. The virus that we are working with, Citrus tristeza virus, as you can see here on this map, is widely distributed around the world and is uh, in particular present in uh, South Africa and as well as in the United States, for instance, in Florida, where I am located, as well as in California, and has already killed more than 100 million citrus trees worldwide. So this image uh, is taken in was taken in Florida during a CTV-induced epidemic in the past century. And this image shows you a citrus field heavily infected with a decline uh, causing isolate of CTV. And here you can see empty spaces. So those empty spaces essentially uh, represent uh, dead and removed trees. 
So you can see here, uh, essentially is one of the examples of the impact of uh, a decline uh, causing isolate of CTV on uh, citrus tree um, growth and essential production as well. Um, so citrus tristeza virus is the longest and most complex member of the cluster virida family. It has long flexuous virions of unique morphology, so-called rattlesnake structure, built of two capsid proteins that cover the genomic RNA, which size is approximately 20 kilobases. The natural host range of CTV is limited to citrus in which the virus infects phloem associated cells. And under the laboratory conditions, this virus could also uh, infect Nicotiana bentamiana. So this is essentially a laboratory herbaceous host that allows us uh, to do certain experiments. Uh, in nature, on the field, CTV is transmitted by aphids and also by grafting of the infected budwood. Um, CTV causes two types of uh, disease. Uh, here you can see quick decline, which is essentially death of citrus trees grown on the sour orange rootstock and stem peating. Uh, stem peating affects uh, sweet oranges, grape roots, and uh, lime trees, irrespective of the rootstock and results from abnormal vascular development induced by the virus. The 19.3 kilobase uh, RNA genome of CTV contains 12 open reading frames, uh, which encode proteins involved in virus replication, assembly of virion, virus movement in the ho plant hosts, three suppressors of the host RNA silencing response, and several genes that are involved in the virus interaction with the host. And interestingly, uh, virus mutants in which these three genes that encode the P33 protein, P18 protein, and P13 protein. Uh, so those mutants with deletions of these three genes could still infect uh, a number of citrus hosts. Isolates of CTV uh, can be uh, grouped in at least six, so now we think that it could be even seven or eight uh, different strains or genotypes. And uh, these strains are defined based on the nucleotide sequences of the open reading frame 1A, uh, which shows greater divergency between uh, the genomes of different strains, uh, with uh, the percentage of sequence identity between variants of different strains decreasing to almost 70%. At the same time, the three prime half of the virus genome is more similar between variants of different strains. And uh, here, the percentage of sequence identity ranges between 89 to about 95%. At the same, at the same time, vi uh, virus variants that belong to the same strain uh, generally uh, have a similarity between uh, around 90% throughout the genomes. So interestingly, uh, virus variants that belong to the same virus strain could have very different gen phenotypes. And some of these variants could cause disease and uh, at the same time, other variants that belong again to the same strain could be very mild or even symptomless. And in nature, CTV is usually present in trees as complex populations made up of mixtures of different strains. So the coexistence of two, three, or even more different strains in the same trees has been reportedly, uh, uh, repeatedly reported uh, by many different research groups and in many different uh, citrus growing regions. And for a while, there have been no explanation of this interesting phenomenon. So one of the uh, projects in our lab, one of the actual major interests of our lab is understanding viral cross-protection or superinfection exclusion, which is a phenomenon in which a primary viral infection prevents a secondary infection with the same or closely related virus. So this phenomenon was first observed about 100 years ago by Makini, who demonstrated that plants 
uh, infected with a green mosaic uh, variant of tobacco mosaic virus, uh, green mosaic strain of tobacco mosaic virus were then protected against secondary infection with another strain of tobacco mosaic virus, for instance, yellow mosaic virus. So um, cross-protection or superinfection exclusion limits replication of two or more closely related viruses in the same cell and at the same host, and therefore plays an important role in the virus pathogenesis and evolution of viral populations, and has also clear implications in treating viral infections. So with plant viruses, uh, cross-protection has been used as a tool to reduce infection and crop losses due to severe virus isolates by purposefully pre-infecting plants with mild isolates of the virus. And specifically with citrus tristeza virus, this approach has been most extensively used for protection against CTV-induced stampeding in several countries, including Brazil, Australia, South Africa, Peru, Argentina, and Japan, uh, where this approach essentially pre-immunization of trees with mild virus isolates in order to protect against severe isolates that cause disease. So this approach allowed commercial production of uh, many different citrus varieties, despite the presence of aggressive stem beating isolates in those regions. However, um, in many cases, uh, quite often, uh, um, essentially uh, finding of protecting isolates and their evaluation was quite difficult and taking years. And in many areas, uh, it was almost impossible to find protective isolates. So without knowing uh, how indeed cross protection works. So uh, this procedure was uh, essentially empirical and taking years. And in many cases, uh, in many areas, this essentially was uh, establishment of cross protection based management uh, practices was impossible. So all this was due to the situation that we did not have an understanding essentially how cross protection works. So we could not understand why some mild isolates cross-protected while others failed. So, and now I'm going to talk to you about our research on dissection and characterization of the viral factors that mediate uh, CTV superinfection exclusion. So some time ago, we engineered a green fluorescent protein tagged CTV variant based on the T36 strain of CTV. So essentially this construct uh, contained an extra gene of the green fluorescent protein inserted in the virus genome. And this construct allowed observation of CTV accumulation and distribution in the infected plants. So this is how inside of bark uh, from a citrus tree infected with this green fluorescent protein tagged CTV looks under the fluorescent microscope. As you remember, I mentioned that citrus tristeza virus specifically infects phloem associated soils. So here you can actually see those green cells. These are essentially cells that are infected with this GFP marked virus and those cells express uh, show GFP fluorescence. And these are more pictures showing GFP tagged CTV in the phloem cells uh, of stems, roots, and leaves. And we use this virus construct as a tool to examine superinfection exclusion. And our first experiment aimed to understand the relationship between variants of different uh, CTV strains in terms of uh, superinfection exclusion. And at first, we examined the ability of different CTV variants that belong to different strains to exclude superinfection by the GFP tagged virus, which was built based on the T36 strain. So in this experiment, we used 13 different uh, variants belonging to five different strains of CTV 
uh, for primary infection of citrus trees. And upon establishment of these primary infections, citrus tree were then the citrus trees were then challenged with the GFP tagged T36 virus. And the ability of this GFP tagged T36 virus to super infect trees that were already pre infected with variants of other CTV strains was determined based on the observation of uh, GFP fluorescence. So, in case if this uh, GFP tag T36 virus was excluded, we expected to have lack of GFP fluorescence. And uh, in the case uh, in which the secondary infection by this GFP tag T36 virus was allowed, so no exclusion took place. So we expected uh, that this virus uh, would be able to multiply in these trees, move and express GFP. So as you can see uh, on this uh, slide, uh, as a result of this experiment, we found that superinfection exclusion occurs only between variants of the same CTV strain, but not between variants of different CTV strains. So as shown here, exclusion of the secondary infection by the T36-based uh, virus occurred only in plants that were pre-infected with a variant of the same T36 strain, while variants of all other um, uh, heterologous strains allowed superinfection with this T36-based virus. So, uh, we did not have any interference between primary infection with uh, variants of different strains and the challenge virus, which was built based on the T36 strain. So this phenomenon was then uh, confirmed uh, by additional experiments in which we use different combinations of uh, primary infecting uh, viruses and uh, challenge viruses and uh, different assay methods. So uh, inability of variants of different strains to exclude each other explained a earlier observed phenomenon uh, in which uh, we uh, were able to find field citrus trees that contained several different uh, virus strains. So um, at the next step, uh, we decided to look uh, at the distribution of uh, two individual virus variants in superinfected uh, in superinfected plants at the cellular level. And here, uh, we uh, examine the distribution of the variants of the T36 and uh, T68 strains in superinfected citrus plants uh, using cross sections of leaf petioles and RNA scope in situ hybridization technique that allows simultaneous visualization of two RNA targets with high level of specificity. As we expected, uh, viral RNA of both T36 and T68 variants uh, was detected at high levels in the fluent cells of doubly infected trees, as was shown uh, by the development of strong blue chromogenic signal, which essentially uh, marked uh, the T36 RNA and uh, red chromogenic signal, as you can see here, that essentially um, uh, marked the infection by the T68 RNA. So, but what was actually interesting that on many occasions, we were able to find cells uh, that were infected uh, at the same time by the two variants. So, and those cells actually showed here, uh, are shown here as dark purple color. So in those cases, we were able, in those cells, we were able to detect presence of both T36 variant and T68 variant. So this indicated that upon sequential infection of citrus trees with uh, variants of two different CTV strains, exclusion occurs neither at the host level nor at the cellular level. Uh, 
So what is the biological significance of the lack of exclusion between variants of different strains? So we think that this situation provides an opportunity of, for beneficial interaction between variants of different strains and also for generation of novel virus variants through recombination between these uh, two different strains. So while, um, uh, while variants of different CTV strains uh, were not able to exclude each other, variants of the same strain demonstrated complete superinfection exclusion. So the biological significance of such exclusion as it prevents competition between two highly similar variants for the host and cellular resources and allows successful infection by the primary infecting virus. So our next question was, what are the viral determinants of superinfection exclusion that allow the established virus to discriminate between a self-like and the non-self-like virus variants and thus determine the outcome of the challenge virus infection. And to address this question, uh, we first looked at the genomic regions uh, uh, that encode three CTV proteins, P33, P18, and P13. Earlier, it was demonstrated that CTV mutants with deletions of these three genes retain the ability to infect, multiply, and spread throughout citrus trees. So using a T36 infectious clone, we engineered virus constructs containing deletions of the P33, P18, and P13 genes. Uh, and tested their ability to prevent superinfection by the GFP tag of the T36 uh, virus variant. So in this case, uh, the mutants uh, used for primary infections and the challenged and the challenging virus, GFP tagged virus, all originated from the same T36 uh, virus strain. As a result, mutants, uh, containing deletions of the P18 and P13 genes completely prevented superinfection by the GFP tagged expressing virus. Uh, similarly to the wild type, to the parental wild type virus. On the other hand, mutant virus that lacked the P33 gene failed to exclude the challenge virus. And similar inability uh, to exclude the parental virus was also found in uh, trees that were pre-infected uh, with a virus variant that carried a frame shift mutation within the P33 gene. So this virus variant was also unable to produce the functional P33 protein. So these findings indicated that the CTV superinfection exclusion is a virus control function which requires the production of the functional P33 protein. So we looked at, into this phenomenon further. And uh, when we used two uh, CTV variants, both lacking the P33 protein, and uh, one of these variants was tagged uh, with the red fluorescent protein, and uh, another uh, variant was used, uh, was tagged with the green fluorescent protein. So when we used these two uh, mutant viruses for sequential infection, due to the inability of them to exclude each other, uh, due to the essentially uh, loss of the P33 protein, so we obtained plants that were super infected by both viruses. So interestingly enough, uh, both viruses, and here you can see essentially an images of the inside of the bark of the citrus trees uh, that were essentially doubly infected with the GFP and RFP labeled uh, P33 deletion mutants. So both viruses were often found infecting cells that located in close proximity. Uh, showing lack of within host and within tissue segregation. However, cellular co-infection with these both variants was very rare. 
And when we calculate, when we calculated uh, the cellular multiplicity of infection, which is the number of virus genomes that enter and successfully replicate in a cell, we found that MOI values were very low and essentially averaged uh, one. So the, these mutants uh, lacking the P33 protein were able to co-infect the same plant, but not the same cells. So in these cases, exclusion was lost at the whole plant level, but not at the cellular level. So this suggested that P33 mediates CTV superinfection uh, exclusion at the whole organism level, but not at the cellular level. And uh, that in case of CTV, this phenomenon is operated at the two deep uh, at the two different levels by the two different mechanisms. And this also suggested that there could be additional viral factors that involved in this phenomenon. So to examine what other viral factors uh, are also required for CTV superinfection exclusion, we explored the other parts uh, of the CTV genome. And using a T36 infectious clone, uh, we generated T36 based uh, hybrid viruses in which different regions in the three prime half uh, of the genome were substituted with the cognate sequences derived from other two strains, T68 or T30. Uh, all these substitutions, however, so then at the next, so at the first step, we used these hybrid viruses for primary inoculations of citrus plants, and then we tested their ability to uh, exclude superinfection by the wild type T36 virus uh, tagged with the green fluorescent protein. So all these substitutions in the three prime half regions uh, of the virus genome. Uh, however, did not affect superinfection exclusion. And similar to the wild type T36, uh, all these hybrids were able to exclude uh, secondary infection by this T36 virus, demonstrating that essentially none of these genes residing in the three prime half uh, of the virus genomes genome, uh, are responsible for the superinfection exclusion. So at the next step, uh, we decided to look at the five prime half uh, of the virus genome. And we started our search uh, with a region uh, that encodes two uh, papain-like leader proteases, L1 and L2, by creating again a T36-based uh, hybrid in which uh, the L1, L2 region was substituted with a cognate region derived uh, from the T uh, T68 strain. So we tagged this hybrid virus with the GFP, and then we examined the ability of this hybrid virus to exclude challenge uh, infection by the parental T36 virus, which in this case we tagged with the red fluorescent protein in order to monitor both viruses. And um, unlike uh, the wild type virus in this experiment, the uh, hybrid virus that contained the substitution within the L1 L2 region from a heterologous T68 uh, strain actually lost its ability to prevent superinfection by the T36 RFP virus. So this suggested that the five prime uh, region of the CTV genome that encodes for the two leader proteases is also involved in the, T in the CTV superinfection exclusion. So altogether, these observations demonstrated that uh, superinfection exclusion by CTV is an active viral function that is operated at two different levels, the whole organism at the cellular level, and requires more than two um, viral, uh, more than one viral factor. And specifically, now we know that uh, this mechanism requires at least two viral factors. So at the next step, uh, 
we uh, are, and currently this research continues, uh, we are now focusing on the characterization of these viral factors in order to unravel their modes uh, of action in the viral superinfection exclusion. And first of all, we were interested in characterizing and further characterizing the P33 protein. So when we started this work, we knew very little about the P33 protein. We knew that it's a unique non-conserved protein, has no homology to with other known proteins, is not essential for CTV infection in most citrus varieties, but it is required for infection of uh, certain citrus hosts. And as you just heard from my presentation, we also found that um, P33 is a key factor in CTV superinfection exclusion and mediates superinfection exclusion at the whole organism level, but is not required for exclusion at the cellular level. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, during our most recent research, we have done a number of very interesting discoveries about this protein, and some of which uh, I would like to uh, highlight now. So first of all, we demonstrated that P33 protein possesses a transmembrane domain and uh, at its C uh, terminal end, as, and P33 is an integral membrane protein. Next, we found that uh, membrane association of the P33 protein confers virus ability to extend its host range. So this was shown in our experiments uh, with a virus mutant expressing the P33 protein without its transmembrane domain, which was unable uh, to infect sour orange, one of the selective citrus varieties that require the functional P33 protein for virus infection. We also found that P33 shares characteristics of movement via proteins encoded in the genomes of other plant viruses, such as plasma desmata association and the ability to polymerize and form extracellular tubules. And furthermore, we found that P33 protein utilizes the sec cellular secretary pathway and the actin network for its intracellular traffic. Uh, we also found that P33 protein can self-interact via its N-terminal helix, which could be an important property responsible for the diversity of specificity of the biological pathways uh, in which P33 functions. And finally, in our most recent study, we found that the P33 protein um, affects uh, CTV uh, pathogenicity by modulating a host immune response. So we first found that CTV infection triggers production of reactive oxygen species in uh, citrus varieties and also in the herbaceous host Nicotiana bentamiana and induces expression of plant immunity associated genes. And specifically, we then found that the P33 protein triggers uh, ROS production and plant cell deaths in uh, tobacco plants as well as uh, in citrus plants. So deletion of the P33 protein from the virus genome resulted in a significant decrease in ROS production uh, upon virus infection in tobacco plants and as well as in citrus. Uh, while positively impacted virus accumulation and spread, as you can see here. And as we observed, uh, the P33 deletion mutant was able to spread beyond the phloem and even enter the immature xylem cells, which resulted in an abnormal vascular development, vascular tissue differentiation, and in significant enhancement of the stampeding symptom. So based on these observations, we hypothesized that the citrus plant recognizes P33 protein to activate the host immune response to restrict CTV in the phloem tissue, and this thus minimizes the disease syndrome. 
while trying to understand how host immunity recognizes the PTV3 protein and mediates the downstream responses, we found that citrus miraculin like protein recognizes and hijacks the P33 protein, interferes uh, with its role in the virus movement, and additionally induces cellular stress, thus working in defense against CTV infection. So um, now we know much more about this interesting protein. However, we still have many questions. For instance, is P33 an accessory movement protein that mediates virus movement in specific hosts? Do the discovered characteristics of the P33 protein reflect its role in virus superinfection exclusion and whether there is an overlap uh, between different functions of the P33 protein. And besides P33 protein, we're also very much interested uh, in understanding how the five prime genomic region uh, works in CTV superinfection exclusion. And our interest in, in our interest in, interest in answering this uh, latter question resulted in a new avenue of our research. So it was previously shown that during CTV infection, uh, the virus produces more than 30 species of RNA molecules, uh, which include the genomic RNA and then its uh, complementary negative copy, plus a set of three prime coterminal subgenomic RNAs, which serve as messenger RNAs for translation of internal and three prime end genes, and uh, as well as their uh, negative copy. And uh, besides those uh, RNAs, the virus also drives production of two uh, relatively short uh, five prime terminal uh, positive sense RNAs, uh, which uh, have sizes of approximately 750 nucleotides and 650 nucleotides, and were actually referred to as low molecular weight tristeza, or LMT1 and LMT2. So LM, production of LMT2 correlates with the virus assembly and may represent a product of uh, viral uh, RNA breakage, on the other hand, LMT1 represents a totally different case. So LMT1 is produced in large amounts early in the virus infection. And here you can see a, a scheme of uh, the structure of this LMT1 RNA. It's highly structured uh, RNA. So it's produced in large amounts in early in virus infection, it appears uh, to not encode in protein. So we are referring to this uh, RNA as viral long non-coding RNA. And uh, this RNA is produced uh, during virus replication by termination at specific five prime controller element. And what was actually important for us that this LMT1 contains sequences in the five prime region of the virus genome, which as we show earlier by our genetic uh, approach uh, to be involved in a CTV superinfection exclusion. So to um, address a role of, um, excuse me, Okay. Uh, okay. Um, to address the role of LMT1 in CTV superinfection exclusion, we first generated a GFP tagged virus mutant that did not uh, contain specific controller element, and then uh, thus it was unable to produce uh, LMT1. So this uh, virus uh, retained the ability to replicate to produce uh, three prime uh, subgenomic RNAs as well as LMT2, but uh, lost its ability to produce uh, LMT1 RNA. So at the same time, this virus also produced normal fully protected virions. However, 
uh, the virus that uh, was unable to, pro uh, to produce this LMT1 showed a clear impediment in its invasiveness in a laboratory herbaceous host. So you can see here that upon inoculation of Nicotiana bentamiana plants, the titer of this mutant virus was significantly low compared to the titer of this virus, of the wild type virus, and as well as the movement of this uh, LMT1 deficient mutant in Nicotiana bentamiana plants was also retarded. And at the same time, and furthermore, this mutant was unable to infect citrus plants. So we, uh, based on this, we decided to look in the, at the interaction of this uh, virus mutant with plant immunity further. And we actually observed that in Nicotiana bentamiana, infection by this LMT1 deficient mutant was accompanied by higher levels of salicylic acid, as well as salicylic acid responsive defense related genes compared to uh, the accumulation of salicylic acid and the expression of these genes upon the uh, infection with the CTV wild type. And by expressing only the LMT1 RNA, we showed that interestingly enough, the LMT1 RNA itself is responsible for modulation of uh, salicylic acid host response to CTV infection. So this essentially explained us why uh, this mutant that was unable to mitigate the salicylic acid signaling uh, was, uh, show, was significantly weaker even in Nicotiana bentamiana plants, and furthermore, it was unable to infect citrus plants. So uh, LMT1 RNA was extremely important and is extremely important for virus ability to mitigate the host response. So not only uh, by uh, essentially decreasing and uh, salicylic acid signaling, but also we found that LMT1 increases the expression of the alternative oxidase, which is known to suppress ROS accumulation upon virus infection. So uh, we found, uh, therefore, we found that uh, LMT1 RNA, which is non-coding uh, viral RNA, is important player uh, of the virus interactions with the host and is a crucial component uh, of the virus in order for the virus to establish infection. So, but how all this uh, relates to our interest in understanding the role of this five prime region in uh, superinfection exclusion and specifically the role of this LMT1 RNA in uh, CTV superinfection exclusion. So, in interestingly, very recently, we discovered that the CTV P33 protein specifically binds LMT1 RNA. And we used very different biochemical approaches to establish uh, this specific interaction between this non coding RNA LMT1 and the CTV P33 protein, and essentially confirmed that this two components interact uh, between uh, themselves. So now we are trying to understand the biological significance of uh, this interaction. And uh, we are trying to uh, see if this interaction, where, if and how this interaction uh, essentially uh, plays a role and acts in a CTV superinfection exclusion. And at the end of my talk, I would like to say a few words about um, an uh, applied aspect, uh, applied aspect of our research. So as you remember, for a while, there have been no understanding of how CTV cross protection work. And uh, this is essentially resulted in uh, quite lengthy 
selection of protecting isolates and their evaluation. So now we believe that understanding uh, of the fundamental aspects of CTV superinfection exclusion makes selection of uh, protecting isolates and designing uh, cross-protection schemes relatively straightforward. And uh, this is our recipe for uh, cross-protection against severe CTV isolates. So the first step would be to identify the enemy. So essentially determine what is the strain of the severe isolate that you are interested to control. So the next step would be finding a mild virus variant, mild, mild isolate that carries a variant of the same strain, because you remember that uh, for protection, for exclusion, uh, we need to have uh, the situation when we have a protecting uh, strain and uh, the strain that we want to control, those two essential variants, uh, those two variants, the variant uh, that is present in the mild isolate and uh, the variant that we uh, want to control in the severe isolate, these two variants for successful protection uh, need to belong to the same genotype group, to the same strain group. So the, uh, thus, uh, our second step would be uh, to find a mild isolate that carries a variant of the same strain. And uh, how we would do it? We would do it by characterizing natural mild isolates. So if we cannot find a naturally occurring mild isolate, we would have to make one. So we would need to map the disease-causing determinant in the severe isolate and remove it. And um, once those uh, variants, mild variants are found, uh, we would use them to protect new uh, trees against uh, the severe uh, isolate that induces the disease. And now I would like to acknowledge people uh, that uh, worked in my lab uh, over several years. So here you can see uh, past members of my lab and uh, present members of my lab, which contributed uh, to this work. And I also would like uh, to um, acknowledge funding uh, that supported this work. And uh, at the end, I would like to uh, thank all of you for your interest in this research, and I will be happy to answer your questions um, if you have those. Thanks, Svetlana, for a very interesting talk. Uh, it's been great to catch up on your research. I've been a bit disconnected with CTB research after my PhD ended. So it's been wonderful to see the progress that you've made since then. Uh, I'm going to open the floor for questions. If you have questions online, just raise your hand. Yeah, I have a very, a very practical question concerning the P33. Maybe you, you read the chat. I was wondering whether you tried to find interactors of this um, viral protein by performing, I don't know, like uh, split ubiquitinous two assays or things like that to try to identify the interactors? Uh, you know, the, uh, so far, the only host protein that we found to interact uh, with P33 is this uh, miraculin-like protein. Yes, and we found that indeed uh, miraculin like protein 2 uh, from citrus, it actually interacts, physically interacts with this protein. And we believe that by interaction, it essentially um, kind of kills the ability of P33 to function in virus mutant in virus movement. So uh, virus would become a retarded virus in terms of it would be moving significantly slow, slower. Uh, we also found that P33 interacts with some viral proteins. Yes, we found that P33 interacts with three viral proteins, code protein, P20, and P23 protein. Interestingly enough that the common feature between this P20, P23, and CP, uh, that all of them are suppressors of host RNA silencing. So we found that P33 interacts with those, yes, 
we still don't know really uh, what is the biological significance of this interaction. However, we could actually suspect that we remember that P33, we can delete P33 from the virus mm -hmm. genome. Yes, mm -hmm. the virus can still infect many citrus varieties, but not all. So we believe that for some of the selective uh, citrus hosts, uh, maybe this interaction between P33 and suppressors is important for the ability to infect those um, citrus hosts. Okay, so we have a question in the chat box from Renato. She says, thank you very much for an interesting presentation. How often are new CTV strains discovered? How new CTV strains discover? Uh, so uh, we know that now, you know, new virus discovery through through next generation sequencing like RNA-seq is very widely used for virus discovery everywhere. And we know that uh, in many different regions uh, around the world, uh, there are many researchers who are really interested in, you know, characterizing populations of uh, CTV variants. And uh, they collect samples uh, from uh, suspicious, potentially infected, yes, uh, citrus plants. They uh, then perform uh, RNA sequencing, then they analyze them, and then they essentially conduct phylogenetic analysis and to see uh, what is the level essentially of relatedness, what is the level of similarity between those CTV variants that they found in their samples to those that are already published in the gene bank. Yeah, and then I think to follow on from that, so the number of strains that you see that you've shown us in that um, phylogeny, that's been relatively stable for a long time. It's not often that new strains really are discovered that often. It seems to be that the genotypes are quite stable. Yes, so um, CTV actually is quite interesting virus. So um, intrinsically, it's very stable. Uh, but again, there are, uh, I showed you the picture from um, uh, the publication that was uh, essentially dated to 2013. So now we think that uh, there is probably more than six strains. It could be seven or even eight strains. And I know that we are getting sometimes, you know, new publications that uh, believe that uh, some of the variants that they find uh, could probably represent new strain. And that could be the case. Um, but at the same time, uh, we actually think that uh, there was a quite interesting actually paper published, I believe in 2021 about finding different CTV strains in this origin, uh, in this presumed origin of citrus, yes, which is in this Himalayan regions and what was the region and what was in uh, South essentially uh, East Asia, Asia. And what is actually interesting uh, that they were able to find already CTV variants of different strains right in that region. So we could hypothesize that actually CTV strains probably arouse a long time back and maybe actually before the citrus uh, was dispersed um, around the globe. So we have another question in the chat box here from Jeannie. She wants to know, how do you define a CTV strain? Okay, so uh, we defined a, a CTV strain based on the analysis of the five prime open reading frame 1A. So as I mentioned, this region of the uh, CTV genome shows the most divergence uh, between uh, variants that represent different strains. So for example, uh, this region can uh, show as low as about 72% similarity between the genomes of variants of different strains. At the same time, the other half of the CTV genome is more conserved and shows about 90-95% similarity. So if you want to establish whether these two variants belong to the same strain, 
or uh, to different strains, you need to compare to analyze the sequences in the five prime region. And interestingly enough, the most five prime region, about maybe one KB region or two KB regions from the CTV genome, actually, this region is the most divergent. And this is why we actually believe that the factor that allows uh, in cross protection and super infection exclusion to discriminate, yes, between self like and non self like variant between protecting virus and the challenging virus actually resides in this most five prime area. So that's why we believe that this uh, RNA should be a good candidate for this discrimination factor. David, yeah. I mean, this has been a fascinating talk, and thank you very much. I'm not a virologist, but I was thinking in terms of the practical um, suggestions for cross protection that you suggest. I mean, a question in my mind is take, for instance, a, a particular orchard where you are, say in Florida, how many different strains do you typically find in an area? Or is, are there very few? Because one would have to. Yeah, I mean, you, you, your cross protection has got to be with a mild strain of the particular aggressive strain. Um, if there are many strains in an orchard, this would be, you know, and a citrus tree grows for a long time. Um, so these are slow growing plants. I mean, can you practically do that? Or is, are there very few strains in particular areas? I mean, what about South Africa, David? Do you know the virus? So, um, you know, it actually depends, of course, on the area. Yes, so some areas uh, could have more strains. Uh, some areas could probably have uh, one strain or maybe two strains, yes. But um, if you say, for example, have a citrus orchard, yes, if this orchard is relatively old, maybe 10 plus years or something like this, so the chances would be that uh, this orchard uh, is more or less uniformly infected with the mixture of all these strains, yes? Uh, but uh, what is important? So the first step would be to characterize strain representation in these trees, yes? But the next step, so say for example, you determine that, okay, strain A, B, and C are present there, yes? But the next step uh, would be to determine which actually variant, variant of which strain is responsible for disease. So for instance, uh, in, uh, in Florida, yes, we have two predominant strains. One is T30, another one is T36. So uh, T30 is mild, it does not cause a disease, yes, uh, T36, uh, is responsible for decline. So um, we really do not control decline by cross protection because controlling decline is easy, yes, since decline only develops on the sour orange rootstock. So use another rootstock and then you can forget, you know, about decline. Uh, but in case, say, for, for example, we have a VT strain. So VT strain, uh, variant, some variants of the VT strain could have stampede. So cross protection is a measure to control stampede. Say, for example, we characterize uh, the population of our strains in this area, and we determine that we have T36, T30, and VT. Um, we should probably conduct additional analysis to confirm that this variant of VT strain is indeed responsible for stem eating disease here, yes? All right, so once we establish that VT is responsible, now to, uh, for cross protection, we need to find the mild VT variant. So we don't care very much about T30. We don't care about T36 here in that mixture, yes? But we would like to control VT. So we would need to find the mild VT variant and use it uh, as for pre-immunization against this mixture. So this is how uh, we think it works with the mixture. 
if you have only one strain, for example, uh, I know that in South Africa, you have T68, yes, VT, uh, some of the aggressive uh, variants of the T68 strain, and they are responsible for stem picking. So the goal would be to find a T68 uh, variant that does not cause uh, stem picking and use it for protection against T68. And you can engineer that also. Well, if you know what the pathogenic are. Yes, yes. Um, of course, you can, you know, you can, if, for example, you are unable uh, to find the mild variant, yes, uh, you can uh, take your severe variant, you can clone it, you can genetically modify it by, you know, first you, of course, you need to identify stem pitting causing determinant, which we still don't really know. This is another story we have tried, you know, also to establish. We have some ideas which regions affect stem pitting ability, yes, a degree of stem pitting, but uh, it's still it's not, um, you know, just completely clear. Uh, but uh, for instance, if we succeed and we know which region of the CTV genome is responsible for stampeding, what we can do, we can take uh, the aggressive isolate, the severe variant, we can mutate that region. This way we would create a mild variant and we can use this mild variant again uh, for protection against uh, endemic severe uh, isolates. But of course, that would be, you know, another question with all these approvals and regulatory issues and um, public acceptance, because that would be, of course, you know, some of the, um, you know, modification, uh, gene modification uh, related questions. Right, we have another question in the chat box from um, Carl, who says, I wonder if the P30, P33 can buy not only LMT1, but also the genomic RNA and thereby regulating its um, translation and or replication. Yes, you know, this is very interesting question, but we actually, um, in our study that we published uh, in 2021 in viruses, we, uh, we believe that we excluded that situation that P33 binds the genomic RNA. We could not find the genomic RNA may, uh, you know, be bound to the P33 protein, although, of course, LMT, since it's just like a fragment, yes, of the same genomic RNA, we could believe, but what I think makes a big difference, yes, that the RNA structure of the genomic RNA would be totally different from the secondary and tertiary structure of this short 700 uh, 50 nucleotide LMT1 fragment. So the folding could be very different. Yes, although the primary RNA sequence is the same, folding is different because think about it, uh, that uh, the whole genome is 20,000 nucleotides. So the folding of the 20,000 nucleotide would be different from the same fragment folding 750 nucleotide. And we know that uh, whenever we have protein RNA interaction, so not so much primary sequence is um, determines the interaction, but the folding, the secondary structures, the loops, you know, in those uh, stem loop structures in the secondary structures, those uh, usually are responsible for interaction. But again, uh, we need to, um, uh, we need to deter, I mean, we need to investigate all these, you know, specifics further and to determine essentially the biological role of this interaction. But so far, we believe that P33 only specifically binds only LMT1. Uh, in our experiments, for example, we used a, as a control, we used another CTV protein, which is P23 protein. And earlier on, by other researchers, it was shown that P23 protein is binds RNA in a non-specific sequence, non-specific manner. So we used uh, P23 as a positive control, and we showed that, it, of course, P23 binds uh, LMT1 and something, for, uh, another RNA from 3' end and some other RNAs, but P33 so far was shown only a specific interaction with this LMT1 region, LMT1 RNA. So I have a question. Um, we often say 
proteins like p33 have no common ranks. So that's often when we're looking at the amino acid sequence level. There possibly are homologs that share functional similarities in other viruses. Do you think that if we had to dig a bit deeper, we would find similar superinfection exclusion mechanisms happening in other members of the Posteroviridae family? Or do you think this is something very unique to Pistis? You know, it's actually a very interesting question. And you know that uh, a cluster viruses, uh, they have a conserved uh, gene block of five genes, for example. This is P6, HSP70, P61, and two code proteins, yes? But interestingly enough that not all uh, cluster viruses contain a similar gene in the same position as the p33 uh, protein encoding gene in the CTV genome. However, there are several cluster viruses that contain a gene in the same position and similar molecular weight, yes, around 30k in that position. Primary, uh, of course, amino acid sequences are very different, but what is interesting that some structural features, for example, are still there. So, for example, all of them have a C-terminal transmembrane domain. Uh, all of them have uh, some kind of N-terminal helix, and we showed that N-terminal helix and P33 is respons responsible for self-interaction. So, we could hypothesize that this protein, uh, although not the primary sequence, but maybe uh, secondary structures are similar and functionally there could be some similarity. Also, what is important here is, is if you can think about uh, which viruses need the ability to exclude uh, variants of the same virus. And you will conclude that viruses that infect persistent, uh, um, that uh, infect perennial hosts, yes? Because right. think, about, think about citrus, yes? Citrus can grow for 50 or 70 years. So during this whole life, if it's uh, fly again, feed on these infected trees, could bring another strains, could bring variants of the same strain. So if virus is already persist and virus can persist uh, in citrus host, you know, for the long, for the length of the host life. So virus need to be able to defend against highly similar variants. Yes, because highly similar variants of the same strain would compete for host and cellular resources. So virus need to have ability to exclude highly similar strains. So if we are talking about maybe herbaceous host, maybe this ability is not so important. Yes, because the growth period of life of these uh, plants is very short and maybe uh, not many opportunities of bringing another variants of uh, the same virus, you know, take place. So going back to cluster viruses, interestingly enough that cluster viruses that infect perennial host, these are cluster viruses that contain 33 like proteins in this position. Yeah, so it I mean, it's a hypothesis, of course, yes, but by kind of certain correlation uh, and rationale and the need, uh, we can hypothesize that uh, some proteins, uh, P33, functionally like, yes, are present in other cluster viruses too, yes. Yeah, I'm just thinking of something like grapevine leaf roll viruses that, you know, you could apply the same control mechanism to those. Yes, yeah, so, so far we, re, we, f, we still think that this mechanism that we are kind of establishing, yes, for CTV seems like rather unique. Uh, you know, for a while, uh, cross protection and super infection exclusion was, was thought to be uh, just a simple case of RNA silencing. For example, uh, virus infects a host, induces RNA silencing, against itself and also against highly similar variants of the same virus, yes? 
but we actually showed, I didn't mention it in uh, to my talk, but we showed that uh, we don't think that uh, RNA silencing explains CTV superinfection exclusion. Because if you think about it, even uh, variants of two different strains, uh, which do not exclude each other, yes, those variants have a lot of similarities in the three prime half regions. So the virus, uh, can produce tons of RNA, small RNAs that would be homologous to this um, RNA sequences in the three prime half of another strain. So uh, still, it should be also, you know, able to exclude another strain. Also, if you're going back to the P33 deletion mutant, yes, P33 deletion mutant does not exclude the full length virus, yes, but uh, it doesn't have this gene or protein P33, but remaining 19 or 18,000 nucleotides, yes, are exactly identical, yes, to the challenging virus. So tons of small RNAs are produced by the P33 deletion mutant, but those are not excluding the challenge vi virus. Um, do we have any last questions from the floor? If not, then I'm going to say thank you very much, Svetlana, for a wonderful talk. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Barana to, to close the session. So you know, I, I'll be brief and just also say thank you very much for a really stimulating uh, talk and discussion. It's incredible to see this history of systematic uh, unpacking of this work and digging deeper and deeper into the basic science and understanding the mechanisms and how this leads to practical applications like this and, and how we can think about this and other systems or not. Uh, it's really, really been stimulating. So thank you so much for the time and to David for the invitation and Merriman and Marcus for the organization and all of you who joined us. Thanks. Thank you very much, everybody. Anyway, wish you a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation, for listening to my talk. Uh, especially big thank you for some of my uh, CTV and cluster virus researchers. And very big thank you, thank you uh, for the non-virology audience for your interest uh, to this subject. And, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.